video. I know you got no She passed away July 3rd. Thank you, and I really appreciate that. Oh, don't do that. Not me. I had to make a decision regarding my mom's health because she could not, uh, which was going to um, increase uh, her lifespan and also her quality of life, but it was also going to uh, greatly compromise it because she couldn't make the decision. And that was, I had to make a decision to start uh, a line so that she could uh, begin dialysis. During that time, I was working with Durham County government. And uh, I had been with Durham County government for almost 10 years. I was in a position where I was performing exceptionally well. And I say exceptionally well because that is what my evaluations were. They were exceptional. Uh, however, I hated, I hated the job. Do you hear me? And the fact that I said it was a job was problematic. Uh, because I didn't go to school to work a job. And it felt like a job to me. And uh, yeah, I'm going somewhere with this because you're making some valid points and I, 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 I hope that this will uh, inspire just one person in here. So yes, yeah, so I was in this, in this job. I uh, didn't like it from day one. So yeah, I didn't like it from day one. However, I was in that position for two and a half years. Now, mind you, this was uh, right after I had made a major decision uh, or life-altering decision for my mom. Uh, I had gone back to work and I was uh, encouraging them to really maximize my skills. Like I had a lot of skills that they really were not tapping into. Now, what that meant was it was gonna translate into more money, some different responsibilities, and they knew that not only was I intellectually equipped, I had the uh, education to back it up, but that was just something that the agency didn't want. And I was at a crossroads. I was at a crossroads, do you hear me? Here I am, I just made this decision about my mom. I was just like, uh, I had already submitted paperwork to be in a process to take FMLA if I needed to, because family uh, is first to me. And um, I was just like, okay, I'm on the other side of young. And what does that mean on the other side of young? I had just turned 43 at that time. I had just turned 43. And so um, I was just like, okay, there has to be something more. There has to be something more. I'm in this position, I've been in this position again, remember, for how long did I say? Two and a half years. So it wasn't like I was a quitter. It wasn't like I didn't try to make the best of a funky situation, because it was funky from day one. I hated the culture. Now did I make some inroads and some wonderful strides there while I was there? Absolutely, I met some wonderful people, but the, the culture was just very, very, very oppressive. I said, okay, I just turned 43. My mom is having some remarkable health challenges. What do I do? What do I do? Now, I had not been thinking about this for a long time. Here's the clincher. I had a meeting with my supervisor, and yet they were putting more activities on me that was getting further and further away from what I was hired for, um, what was connected with my skill set, and I was just like, you know what? This is for the birds. And so um, she wanted to talk about a new responsibility. I said, let's talk about this in the morning. And she said, well, Randy, we need to talk about this now. I said, let's talk about it in the morning. <laughs> and she said, Randy, we need to talk about this now. I said, I said, let's talk about this in the morning. Because in my mind, I already knew it was a wrap. It was a wrap. So I said, well, let me go home. Because what you don't want to do, and this is a part of mental wellness too, is to make hasty decisions. I said, let me sleep on this. I said, I am done. D-O-N-E. 
done. And I said, before I tell this white woman this, I need to be clear. I need to be clear that I'm done. And so I went home and I said, well, God, I need for you to show me. I said, because I'm really getting ready to step out on faith. Scared shitless, y'all. Scared. And so when people tell you that fear isn't real, that's a lie. Fear is very real. We can either use it as a motivator or we can use it to paralyze us. So I said, well, let me pray. Let me meditate. And I said, you know, the answer will come to me. And I said, well, if I wrestle and toss all night long, I know I need to keep my butt at that job. Okay, because you, you really uh, have to make healthy decisions. And I said, if I sleep peacefully, I know it's a wrap. I'm done. So how do you all think I slept that night? I slept like a baby. You hear me? I got my breast on. I was clear. I went in the next day. I composed my resignation. I submitted it. Of course, my supervisor was like blown away. Well, she said, well, you don't have to, you can leave whenever you get ready. Whenever, that could have been three years from now. You understand what I'm saying? I said, two weeks will be sufficient. Now, during that two weeks, I was still scared shitless. You know, because just because the decision was made, it doesn't mean that I wasn't thinking about what was to come. Okay, because that's important. I'm a planner, I have always been a planner. Uh, strategic about my moves. And I didn't have a J-O-B lined up. I did. But here's the clincher, JB. Preparation is so important. Whenever you're making a decision, particularly one of that magnitude, you wanna make sure you have some cushion. Cause life will happen. I'm gonna say it one more time, life will happen. It will happen to all of us. And some of you, you all have already had some experiences that you're still thinking like, wow, and I'm still here. So um, the two weeks passed. They were like, are you sure? Are you sure you, know, you can come back? I said, no, I'm sure. Next, a week from this coming Saturday will be three years that I've been doing my own thing. So I said that to you, JB, we can make some changes. When we get so sick and tired of being sick and tired, we can make a different move. I'm a living testimony. The point to that is we um, have to be willing to not take abuse, um, not run, but really see things through. And when we have reached our limit, we can make different decisions. So we don't ever have to feel like we are enslaved to anyone. Freedom costs. My freedom isn't free, and yet it's priceless at the same time. So I say that to say that moves can be made, changes can be made. It's all in how we do it. Because part of my decision was, it wasn't just about me making a different decision and stepping out on faith and doing more of what I wanted to do. Yes, that was a part of it. The other part of it was, I knew that my mom's situation was more likely to get worse. And because I was in a position um, to be able to make that move at that time, I could be there when I had to. My mom was defiantly, defiantly independent. I get part of that from her. So you, y'all don't be so independent till you know earthly good. Interdependence is key, balance. That's a part of uh, mental wellness. Um, so yeah, three years later, I've uh, just published my second book. I have had um, opportunities that have absolutely blown me away as a visual artist. Right now, I have a full exhibit uh, at NC State. It will run through October 4th, so it's all original works 
This exhibit was first shown at my, one of my alma maters, North Carolina A&T State University, last fall. It kicked off their Lyceum series, which was a tremendous honor. So I said it to say that um, when we step out on faith, we do our work, uh, we still plan, and just be open to taking a chance, the opportunities are limitless. Limitless. So, I feel me, brother, because I've been right where you are. But we can change, and the change starts with us. And just like around mental health, sometimes we have to be the one to kick the door down, tell our friends, you know what, you don't know what you're talking about. Or, you know, sometimes people can be talking so much trash and smack, the best way to respond is not responding because it's so crazy.